a much beloved movie from 2004. It's, oh wait, I've forgotten the movie. Oh, here it is. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Let's talk about why this movie is great or beloved or both coming up next. <laughs> So I'm of an age where Jim Carrey became a major star while I was what, 10 or 12 years old in Living Color, the TV show, Ace Ventura. I remember him in those. Then he makes this movie. I know he, he, things happened in between, but man, you could not tell that Ace Ventura is in this movie. This is a great performance by Carrey, who plays a beta male who's in love with a woman but has fallen out of love. It's a breakup story. Basically, this is a romantic comedy with a lot of interesting science fictional trappings and a massive meditation on human memory and love and the problems they're in. Cast is great here, and I really like Kate Winslet as the sort of opposite or contrast, the beloved in the story who, well, is in a way an aggressive lover, but she and the Jim Carrey character fall in and out of love several times. This is an interesting dynamic. And then you've got Kirsten Dunst, Mark Ruffalo, Elijah Wood, Tom Wilkinson, Charlie Kaufman on the screenplay as well. Yeah, this uh, this movie to me is the outworking of Michel Gondry, the French filmmaker, you know, taking Kaufman's stuff and being part of the script, I think, and then, you know, having the fleshed out experience. I think he grounds it in something a little bit more rela relatable and ordinary than a Kaufman movie would have been. I think Kaufman's movies since then have been pretty intellectual and actually a little bit hard to grasp sometimes. This movie, it's got a core or a center, which is the romantic comedy between these two lovers who fall in and out of love, as I said. I'll do a quick plot summary, but it's a little tricky because you could probably watch this movie in a variety of ways, trying to figure out what really happened versus what's in characters' minds. The main character, Joel Barish, he falls in love with this woman, Clementine, then he things happen and he decides to erase his memory of her she's erased her memory of him they were longtime lovers and so then the, the, the movie really showcases how this company lacuna interesting word choice there is going about erasing joel's memory and only his memory of clementine so that he will forget his lover and thus not be heartbroken and grief and so on and and have get over very quickly you know, the problems of a, a former love you're still remembering and have good memories of and, and a lot of bad memories too. You can get rid of that stuff and just be yourself or be a whole new person as it were. However, the movie, as I said, is tricky. I mean, the opening is going to be repeated late in the movie. It's There's deja vu all over the movie and the concept of deja vu, what does that even mean? Does it even exist? Well, it could exist in terms of the science fictional technology in the movie, which is memory erasure. Maybe somehow you can relive the past. You You've seen it before but your memory has been erased or partly erased so then you re-experience things thus deja vu is literalized by the science fictional technology in the movie which is that this company lacuna can target parts of the brain and just erase certain memories which they call brain damage and i think that's funny on kaufman's part but only brain damage in terms of being as they say you know a, a big hangover not that big of a deal, but it is brain damage and it is brain surgery. The movie has a wintry feel. It's Valentine's Day 2004. The blues, the fragmentation of reality is all over this movie. It's going to have a wintertime beach setting, that cold, dark, but, you know, you know kind of a, a, a lovely... A haunting texture to it. And I think that that is a thing that happens throughout, which is about sort of memory loss, memory retrieval even, but the fact that this guy is trying to forget her, but wants to continue to remember her. And that for Kaufman is a wintry time feeling who, you know, he's he's worked several times, including the, the movie I really like, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which has a very strong wintertime aspect to it as well. Now, my observations about this movie are a little weird because I'm nerdy and I'm focusing on the technology of memory erasure, which has been a sort of a classic science fiction thing in, in literary science fiction, other science fiction. Philip K. Dick, for example, The Electric Ant, Total Recall, or We Will Remember It For You Wholesale is his original short story and then you get the total recall movies but the idea that uh, some kind of corporation or business can get customers targeting their memories and it's not only that this technology exists it's a for-profit business and so what are the implications the cultural problems the social problems that come up with this and i like that this movie explores this somewhat likening to medical establishment problems but also like sort of working through some 
possible implications of it, including that the people who are doing the brain removal stuff, the lacuna workers, are themselves undergoing their own procedure or have and are discovering that they have, some of them don't even know it. And one a medical establishment comment here, which is wonderful paranoia on the part of Kaufman or whoever else was involved in thinking about this is, what's it like to be out of it in the movie Joel Barish is, is in his apartment and is having his memory erased in, in the course of an evening by these ordinary workers played by Elijah Wood and Mark Ruffalo, but what are they doing as an apartment? They're messing around with this stuff, they're playing around, they're even having sex in the apartment. This idea of medical workers, are they really caring about you? Are they really doing their duty when they're doing whatever? And here it's a brain operation in a way, which I really like that paranoia of if I'm out in surgery, or I'm, I'm incapacitated. What are these nurses, doctors, and orderlies doing around me? So one great idea in the movie, I really like this, is that Patrick the orderly, played by Elijah Wood, he shows up pretty early in the movie, and you have to ask yourself, okay, why is he showing up and asking Joel Barish weird questions about who he is and, and what he wants from him? Then we come to find out that Patrick has sort of, sort of stalked or scouted out, maybe, the girlfriend of Joel, Clementine, has become her boyfriend. Joel learns about this, and in fact, he hears it during the, the brain operation. He's out incapacitated, but he can hear the orderly Patrick talk about her. So that's part of his decision when this operation is undergoing to try to keep Clementine in his memories. It's an interesting you know, medical problem as well. I want to undergo this procedure, but partway through you have your doubts and then you wanna stop it altogether. Well, Joel tries to do that and we see both the exterior world of the orderlies working in his apartment and trying to erase his memories, but Joel then actively trying to get Clementine and keep her somehow in his memories by taking her into his other memories, including his, his four-year-old self. That brings up obviously the uncertainty or the, you know, the melancholy feeling of wanting to keep memories and wanting to get rid of them, those simultaneous paradoxical feelings that probably all of us have about something in our lives. And here it's about love in particular and a former lover. In that sense, the movie has a lot of classic scenes. I mean, the opening before the credits, the first five minutes of the movie or so is the meet cute. You know, the, the time where the boy meets the girl, the girl meets the boy, how they met, their origin story, how they got together and fell in love. But from there, though, this is not a rom-com. Then this is kind of a medical establishment science fiction movie in the way I myself watch it until you get to about the last 20 or 30 minutes. And then, yeah, then the rom-com definitely picks back up for me. And one question this movie brings up is, are we destined for each other? That sort of almost stereotypical idea in these rom-coms, which, oh, these two star-crossed lovers, they were meant for each other. They would always find each each other even if Joel and Clementine erase each other from their memories would they still run into each other and fall in love again and sort of this is a spoiler we're getting into spoilers but I read the end of the movie as saying yes in fact they do and then there's this minor counterpart to this where the or the workers in Lacuna the doctor and then sort of the secretary nurse played by Kirsten Dunst have had a fling and then her memory has been erased but then she rediscovers in fact she sort of hits on him again and discovers that she once had the procedure so you have these sort of two couples two sets who have the memory erasure going on but then they meet again and kind of have the hots for each other again and so then I could probably read the movie as yeah, all, all these lovers are destined for each other no matter what they do no matter if they try to get rid of each other or erase each other from their memories they'll still find each other somehow but then I had a debate on Letterboxd not really but Sammy reviews and I wrote a nice uh, rebuttal to my review and he's, he's talking about how these characters actually develop and as they develop they change and then they run into each other later through the development of each other and the, most of this movie centers on Joel obviously trying to become a different better person I suppose better what does that mean maybe add to his you know beta male personality at the, at the beginning he's going to be more aggressive at least assertive he, he's going to go for what he wants he's not going to be shy and run away and then that's most of the movie, in fact. It does have a little bit, maybe this is part of the movie, Orpheus and Eurydice, where he's going to hell to save her, to pull her out. I think just in his own mind or his own memories, he's trying to save the woman who's going to be lost or erased in those memories. And so Joel has to become that more... I suppose, a assertive, mythical hero, at least in his own mind, and I think that's a pun in the movie. In the end, I see this movie as a really nice riff on rom-coms with the Charlie Kaufman flair. Nevertheless, it's diet Philip K. Dick for me. If you want to dive into some very weird and strange implications of something like brain procedures, memory erasure, 
It's all kinds of science fiction writers who can take you in wild directions. This movie sort of lands back in rom-com territory, which actually is fine and great to me. I don't, I don't mind that at all, because then it focuses more on the love and memory and the personalities of the humans in the movie versus the technology that is necessary for the movie to get going and for things to happen. But in the end, it's less focused on what that technology is up to and do and its implications. In a way, this is a very happy Black Mirror episode. Most Black Mirror episodes are pretty dark, and I would say several years later, once Black Mirror gets going, it would take this technology and focus on the technology over and above maybe some of the, the more deeper, richer human aspects of a, of a story like this. All in all, this is an endlessly fascinating movie, which just has a core emotional heart to it. Anybody can watch it for that, but then you have intellectual puzzles and interesting scenes and shots in which things are erased and the, the meditation on what is memory actually and, and, and how does it work in the human mind this movie is opening up those questions for anybody i like movies like this they're kind of middle brow middle to high brow movies which make you think but make, make you feel so all in all this movie is quite successful and it has been for almost 20 years now what do you think of eternal sunshine of the spotless mind let us know in the comments and this video is dedicated to and asked for by my discord user jimmy thank you so much for asking for this this one's for you